Right, I've, I've started the recording. Fabulous. You're recording, you are recording this meeting. Make sure to let everyone know that they are being recorded. Okay. Right. Thank you. I've just put myself on mute. It's all right. We're ready to go. Thank you. Thank you. Do you want me to start admitting people or are you going to do yes, that? Yes, please. Yes, please. Okay. I'm admitting now. It says admit all of them now. Okay, welcome everybody. If you can see a slide that's up on the screen at the moment, this is being recorded. We'd appreciate it if you turn your webcam off. That means that the whole screen can be seen and it's not populated by lots of little pictures. And also keep your microphone um, off, please, too. You can turn them back on later on when we have the question and answer session. Now, I'd like to welcome you to year three. Um, I bring on to the next slide. Hopefully it will let me do this. Let's have a look and see. Turn it on to slideshow from the beginning and then I can switch the slides. Here we go. Right, so. We've got the year three teaching team. Um, at the moment myself, I'm Mrs. Hatherley. I teach Ash class. And we also have Mrs. Bendel. She's our, our new but highly experienced teacher in Larch. Um, we're lucky to have four very um, experienced uh, cover and support staff teachers. We've got Mrs. Smith, who's been with us for a few years. Hello, Mrs. Mrs. Pryor, um, who's also our lunchtime supervisor. Um, and she's been at Embrook far longer than I have. Um, and probably the longest member of staff there. Um, Mrs. Spencer, who's come down to join us from year six. Um, she's had lots of experience in other years. Um, and we've got a new member of staff, Mrs. Thung. We'd like to welcome her into Larch. Um, and she's learning with us as well. For our PPA cover on a Thursday afternoon, we have Mr. Fisher, which the children know very well. Although one or two of our children are already mixing him up with our head teacher. Um, and also we've got another new member of staff, um, her name is Mrs. Hunter. She joins us this week. She's um, her, her last role was an assistant head teacher in a local school um, and she's coming to join us for PPA. So if you want to contact us at any time, um, first port of call will be myself, Mrs. Hathley or Mrs. Bendel, um, and then we'd be able to help you out with any queries. OK, this is a uh, image of our autumn term timetable. You can see it is rather packed and we try and get through as much as possible within a day. Uh, we have a daily mile which lasts 10 minutes every single morning to get them awake. Um, that's after coming in and whilst we take registration and do lunches, there are already things for the children to do. Now our year threes are used to this because in year two they would come into class and get straight on with the task on their desks. Um, after Daily Mile, we have an hour of maths. We follow the Power Math Scheme, um, which is an amazing scheme. We've trialled it for the last two years. It works really, really well. And it helps children learn in small steps. And I'm really, really sorry, we can't see the slides. They're not going through. The Just slides aren't going through. Can no, you see the year three timetable? No. No. Oh, OK, right. We'll see if we can try and sort out. Can um, somebody tell me what you can see? 
The session's yes. being recorded. The session's the being recorded. The right. slide. Okay, apologies for that. I'll try this earlier and that it was working okay. Let me escape this. Oh, and there we go. It's there now. Can you see the slides now? Yes. The year three timetable, autumn term 2001. Yes, correct. Yeah. And can, uh, is there a parent that can tell us if they can see the slide that says year three timetable? Yeah. Yes. Wonderful. Thank you ever so much. I'll keep it on this then instead of turning it to slideshow. Um, if I say flip back to the previous slide, we've got our teaching staff here, um, our cover teachers and support staff and also our PPA. And then coming back to the year three timetable, you can see it's a rather packed timetable. Um, having to fit in everything that the government expect us to fit in is rather a squash, but we try and do our best as much as possible. Um, as you can see, it starts in the morning before registration with a challenge that's already set out for the children, whether it's arithmetic, um, handwriting, or it be later on in the year, a grammar challenge. After that, we go straight into the daily mile to give them a bit of a 10 minute uh, wake up um, and then into maths. As I was saying earlier, we follow the power math scheme for year three. It's new to our year three, so we're very gently easing them into it um, each day. Um, they start a, another new lesson and it builds on the day before. It will give plenty of challenge and also plenty of support. Um, and as you can see on our timetable, we've also got some extra maths built into three afternoons. We call them mop ups. So if we spot any children that um, might need to go back over a piece of work, have some time to finish it off or to go over some misconceptions, those are the times that we do that as well. Uh, break time is 20 minutes as usual. Um, and then we go into a guided reading lesson. Um, we have 20 minutes per day and the whole class follows the same book and each day they do a slightly different challenge. Some days it might be some drama, some days it might be comprehension, other days we look for the grammar within a book, um, but all the children follow the same book, but we give them a slightly different level of challenge depending on their ability. Um, we have an hour for writing, which we have a spelling session within it. Um, and each three weeks we follow um, a different focus. So the first three weeks of this year, we're using um, How to Wash a Woolly Mammoth book, which is amazing. The children are already absolutely enjoying it. Um, and then the next book that we'll go on to, which will give us our three week focus, is called um, Ugg um, and the Stone Trousers. So it fits in with our Stone Age theme. In the afternoons, we have a mixture of learning journey that we fit in most of the other subjects into. Our learning journey for this half term, these six weeks, um, is tribal tales. Um, so it's got a history basis, but we also have a geography focus in there. Um, we fit in some science looking at forces and how they move Stonehenge. Um, also in the afternoons, the jigsaw is a PSHE, which we follow the jigsaw scheme. And we also follow the Jigsaw RE scheme as well, too. Now, we're also lucky this year that we have um, uh, one of our members of staff who's an amazing uh, mindfulness and mental health coach coming in. And she's going to be teaching the whole year on a Wednesday afternoon um, for a mindfulness lesson. So they may come home um, talking about yoga or meditation or most wonderful ideas that help them deal with the stresses of today. On the Thursday afternoon, you can see that we have our PPA, so that'll be covered by Mr. Fisher and Mrs. Hunter, where they'll be following uh, a music scheme called Churanga and also going outside for outdoor PE. Um, and then on a Friday afternoon, we have more learning journey and also we have an indoor PE slot too. Now, within the juniors, because we have the hearing resource base, um, our modern foreign language or not so foreign really um, is British Sign Language. We decided last year to trial it. Um, broken up a little bit with, of course with COVID lockdown but we're going to start again and learn the BSL signs for the next four years and by the time they finish year six um, they were known enough British Sign Language um, to earn themselves a formal certificate at the end of it and the staff are learning British Sign Language too. OK, so hopefully this one moves on. OK, now we're 
COVID has affected us quite a lot in the last two years. It's surprising, looking at our new year threes, how much time they've spent at home learning with yourselves and how much time they've been in school. Um, one thing we're absolutely delighted about is to allow the children to play together again uh, without bubbles, without restrictions, allow all the year groups at lunchtime to join together and just enjoy being out there, which is wonderful. Um, also, having a whole school assembly again, first time in nearly 18 months is just amazing. Um, one thing we noticed last year when we were using regular gel, regular hand washing and table washing is there were far fewer coughs, colds and tummy bugs that went through the year. Um, so we're going to continue with the hand washing as much as possible. If we will provide um, gel at various times during the day. Now, if your son or daughter um, finds that the school gel affects their hands, I would ask that parents provide maybe a uh, more sensitive alternative. And um, they're always welcome to wash their hands. We've got sinks in each room and we've got soaps available as well. Um, if your child begins to feel unwell this year, we've got a new cough or temperature. Please follow the latest government guidelines regarding testing and isolation. We know it is, is changing all the time, um, but we want as much as possible to keep as people as safe as possible and also make sure that we keep the school open. Okay. okay. On to medical. Now, we are a nut free school. Okay, we're a nut free school because we do have children within our year group and other year groups that have severe reactions to nuts. Um, so please, I know as a parent myself, it's hard to look at every single thing and think, oh, it may contain nuts. Does it contain nuts? But to try to be as sensible as possible. Um, and again, we ask our children to make sure they wash their hands before lunch and after lunch and they don't share snacks or, sna or share um, what's in their lunch boxes. Um, if your child requires medication, including inhalers, um, and you haven't already done so, there's a form from the office that needs to be filled in um, and then bring us some uh, medication in. The medication is stored within either a red box or a red bag by the teacher's desk in class and is always accessible. Uh, we've got quite a few first aiders within our year group um, and we provide first aid within the classroom for cuts and grazes. But we do ask also that you make sure that your telephone contacts are up to date, that if you change your mobile phone halfway during the year or have a different contract or change who can come and pick your child up, that you make sure that the office are up to date with all of those numbers. Just so in an emergency, we know we can get hold of you really, really quickly. Okay. Does any other staff want to jump in at any point? To add anything extra or shall I carry on? Fabulous. OK, play and lunch times. We do have healthy snacks at break, so cheese and vegetables, fruit, rice and breadsticks. Um, children now realising that unlike year two where snacks and milk were provided for infants, they're not provided for junior schools, unfortunately. And so we ask our families to put in a snack at break time. Um, it's always worth doing this because the children do quite a lot of work during the morning and it's a good couple of hours between breakfast and lunch. We tend to find if a child isn't having a snack at break time, they tend to have a, sort of a bit more of a headache or a bit of a dip um, in their learning before lunch. So a, a snack is always a good idea. Um, so year three and four at the moment are sharing the whole playground at break. We have staggered break times, but a joined lunch. And then all year groups share the space at lunch times. Um, year three are already amazing at following the lunchtime routine. They know where to line up. They're first in at the moment. Um, that will change next week where they'll be asked to be second and another year group will come in before them. Um, there is a certain amount of time available in the lunch hall. At the moment, the children with packed lunches are eating outside, so that's not a problem with time. But once it gets to wetter weather, there's only a certain amount of space in the lunch hall. So we do ask children to um, leave their chatter for outside and sort of eat their lunch, focus on eating their lunch, um, so to allow others to come into the hall. Um, lunches can be pre-ordered through the Scope A website. Um, and you can have a look also on the Caterlink website to see what the menu is for the following week. Um, it might be easier if 
you're not a packed lunch and your child's not too sure whether they'd like one food or another to have a chat about it beforehand um, and make the choices at home. As I say, again, we're a nut-free school, so please, 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 as much as possible, make sure that we don't have any nuts in packed lunches or in snacks. Okay, let's move on. Let me see. Equipment. Now, um, one good thing that's come out of COVID that we found really useful is that we provide the children with um, a pack of own, their own equipment. So they've, they've got a brand new pencil case, they've got everything inside that they're going to need for the lessons. Um, and if it's not in their pencil case, then we have it in centralised stores within the classroom. So if they suggest, oh, I need some new pencils from Smiggle or I need, you know, brand new coloured pens or I need all of this stuff for class, they don't, it's all provided. So anything snazzy from Smiggle or WH Smiths, please keep at home. It saves it getting lost or broken or taken by somebody else. Um, or oh, water bottles, if your child isn't already bringing in a water bottle, they need one every day, there's fresh water in the classroom, please put their names on them, either on Sharpie or a sticky label, um, because we tend to have two or three of the similar type and it saves an argument. Later on, when we go into uh, more of the winter term, sort of past October half term, um, we still do use the field if we can. Um, and also, if it's raining or drizzly outside, we still do get the children outside for break times. So outdoor shoes change into, that'd be lovely um, if you have them, or a spare plastic bag for muddy PE trainers would be great as well. So they don't have to then wear muddy PE trainers in class and uh, bring the mud into school. As usual, same as the infants, appropriate clothing for hot, cold or wet, and we encourage the children to get out as fresh air as much as possible. As I said already, we provided each child with a filled pencil case, so no need to head to Smiggle, even though they've got a sale on at the moment. Okay, PE, we have it twice a week on a Thursday um, afternoon with Mr Fisher, that's normally an outdoor session, and on Fridays with the class teachers, and that could be either an indoor or an outdoor session. Um, any child that wears earrings, um, we suggest that if they can be taken out um, at home in the morning and left at home and then put back on later on, that would be great. Um, if they can't take them out, we request that parents provide a little roll of micropore like um, a medical sellotape just to cover the ear, they cover the earrings, please. Um, and a standard during the day, as well as in PE, any long hair. So if your hair touches your shoulders, it does need to be tied back out the way, please. Um, indoor and outdoor kits needed. Well, now the children are wearing PE kits to school, which is brilliant. Um, if they would like to bring a spare pair of jogging bottoms with them um, or a warmer sort of dark, a sweatshirt or fleece um, and put that in their bag just to slip on over the top that's wonderful and again as we get closer towards Christmas oh dear sorry I said that word um, towards the uh, the middle of the winter term then come to school in dark jogging bottoms instead of shorts it will keep them warm during the day now we found that children wearing their PE kit to school um, during the um, the COVID lockdown time it just meant the children didn't waste 20 minutes getting changed with PE one side and then 20 minutes getting changed back. It allows them more time for PE, which is really good, which we want to focus on. Okay. Now our learning journey. Um, across years three, four, five and six, our curriculum is taught through half term topics and themes. And we weave English and history, geography, art, music, DT, sometimes RE, science and anything else we can think of into these. And the themes for this term, the first half term is tribal tales. So we start for prehistory right back at the Stone Age and work our way through about two million years worth of history in six weeks to get us to the Celts. Um, of course, we don't touch on everything. And then the next learning journey we'll be looking at after half term, we'll have a geography focus and then it's the focus on earthquakes and volcanoes and we'll be linking it to a story called Escape from Pompeii. So if you want to get ahead for next half term, anything to do with earthquakes, volcanoes, tsunamis would be good to look at. Um, and if you want to help with this half term, we're looking at Stone Age, going into Bronze Age and then following on to the Iron Age. 
Um, I did let um, Ash Class know today that we have um, put in for a school trip on Friday the 1st of October to a place called Butzer Farm. Um, a letter will be coming out before the end of the week. It's absolutely amazing and I think the children will love it. Okay. Home learning, at the moment, um, we are looking as a school into home learning to find the best way forward. Um, in the past, we have worked on spellings for the year four, three and four spellings that the government expect us to ensure the children understand. Um, we have in the past sent home a topic writ every half term, um, normally around the half term holiday where you can pick and choose what activities you'd like to do as a family. Uh, one thing we encourage um, children to do each night is read. Now all of our children in year three have now been assessed through our AR reading scheme. Um, we're keeping those books in school at the moment because we normally send them home in a complete wallet with a reading record and in the back of that reading record there would be um, different logins for uh, maths times tables online, their Google login and also their AR Reader Scheme login too. Now, we know that the, we've just been told today that the um, reading booklets should have been in, in the end of July. Um, they're coming in on Monday. Mrs. Banks in the office has been chasing the company for them. Um, and we know they're gonna be in on Monday. So we hope that they will be out at latest by next Wednesday. So don't panic if you haven't got a reading record at the moment to jot things down in. Just keep reading every night. And as soon as we've got the packs together, which will be by middle of next week latest, you'll have uh, a brand new reading book um, along with their reading records and all of their login details and space for you to jot down what you're reading with them at home. Um, the, re the new AR reading scheme, when a child has finished a reading book, they bring it back into school um, and then during the day fill in an online quiz that is linked to the book they've just read. Um, they'll see how much they score, how much they understand, um, and it's the comprehension of the book as well as just reading it. Um, and then they'll be either moved on to the next level or to a book within their level to, if they need more practice at that level. Um, time tables, rock stars we use uh, for speed and accuracy. Again, you'll have the login by the middle of next week. Um, we're also using um, some of the BBC super movers. They're quite nice to put up on the screen too. So. There will be um, a letter coming out about home learning um, later on, just formalising what the school has decided and any changes. OK. Now on here, this is nothing new for helping your child read at home. We know that reading is one of the most important skills that as a parent and I'm a parent myself, and so is Mrs. Bendel, um, of what we can do for our children is help them read. OK, and it isn't just being able to decode the letters on the page, it's to understand what they're reading and put it into some kind of context too. So if you can read as much as possible, that would be absolutely wonderful. The other skill that I know as a parent that we can help our children with is maths, basic times tables, enjoying playing with numbers, playing games, um, helping them to use measures when they're cooking, particularly learning how to tell the time on an analog clock, please. We find that's a real challenge because most of us have digital. Or we ask Siri or we ask um, Google to tell us what the time is and it comes up automatically. Um, but they're still expected to be able to tell the time on um, an analog clock. So if you can help them with that with half an hours and quarter of an hours and quarter twos, that would be absolutely brilliant. And also money too, because again, I wonder how many of us when we go shopping just tap a card on, on, the, on the machine and the children actually don't see any kind of transaction using coins or notes. So when it comes to um, addition and subtraction and using money questions, a lot of our children coming through now are finding it more and more difficult because they just don't see us using coins in our everyday transactions. So if you could, telling the time and recognising money and adding and subtracting money would be absolutely wonderful and would really help your child this year. Now we are at the start of a four year programme to get them to um, senior school really. Um, in the infants they were supported um, very highly and had the luxury of lots of adults within the room um, that would do the little things for them. 
Now, within the juniors, we are starting to train them up now to do those little things themselves, like being able to cut out something from a piece of paper and stick it down on a sheet quickly and neatly without it hanging off the page. Um, taking responsibility for what goes into their pencil cases and looking after those things and remembering where to put their lunch boxes and water bottles um, as well too, but really taking responsibility for their belongings. Now we will help them, we will remind them, we will gently nag them if needs be, um, but we do expect that by Christmas that they should be able to do most of these things without having to an adult to do it for them, particularly things like using scissors and glue. Okay, our expectations of behaviour. We have golden rules that you will find on our school website um, that we have up in every classroom. It's linked to our key, uh, key value of kindness. Um, we treat each other fairly. Uh, um, we do not shout. We do not run around the school. Um, we also have things called non-negotiables. Um, these are high standards that we remind the children of. Simple things like joining your handwriting neatly using a ruler for straight lines, please, making sure that sheets are stuck in neatly too. So simple things that actually really improve the standard of their learning and also of their, their work as well. Um, so they will, you will hear about non-negotiables because we'll be going through them step by step, ever so gently and give them lots and lots of reminders. Um, and by the end of year three, we won't need to remind them. Um, we have the Embrook Excellence Award that was started up last year. Uh, we look at our school, our current school values, um, our five of them, and then we have a look around the class and decide which child has shown those values most that week. And on a Friday celebration assembly, um, the Embrook Excellence Award is given out for each class and the child would take a certificate home. Our aim is that every child across the year um, can achieve one of those Embrook Excellence Awards. We've also got other rewards for house points. They can earn house points from everything to um, holding the door open, to getting themselves organised, for lining up beautifully um, and amazing work. And also if members of staff see them doing the right thing for those children that just get on with it um, and show our values and follow our golden rules without any fuss. They end up getting a court doing the right thing slip. Um, they're gathered in once every half term and Miss Scales sorts out a special reward for all the children that have had a court doing the right thing slip. Um, on the other side we have consequences, a bit like football red and yellow card. Children are given lots and lots of reminders on our expectations um, and lots of guidance and help to do the right thing. If we have to remind too many times, we have a little double sided card. One side is yellow. That means, OK, I've asked you enough times. OK, this is your sort of last warning as such before there has to be a more serious consequence. And normally when a child gets a yellow card, um, their behaviour changes immediately. They have a bit of a, a conversation at break time or lunchtime with a teacher about what they would need to improve. Um, and then that yellow card is then taken away. And that's it. So that's dealt with. If we find that their behaviour has gone further than this, they haven't listened to that conversation or it's been more serious, they get a red card. And that means immediately they will lose the next break time or part of their lunch time and sit in with the class teacher and go through the issues and pick out what they need to improve. Um, anything more on than that? we then start speaking to members of our senior management team like uh, Miss Scales or Mr Usher. But we always focus on the positive. Um, we always try to encourage um, rather than nag. And if they've had a rough day the day before, if it's all gone wrong for them, it's a fresh day the next day. Whatever's happened the day before, it's in the past, we start afresh. And every child is given a fresh start. Okay, if your child has any additional needs, either educational, uh, behavioural, Mrs Lisa Branch, she is our amazing inclusion leader. Um, she has been 
she's been called the black belt of dyslexia and SEND by other members of staff. Um, so if you come to us with any queries about your child, about their learning or um, any other issues to do with um, special needs, we would go to her in the first instance. OK, and then she would come back to us with some ideas of how to support your child. Um, but she is the person to speak to if you have any serious concerns. Uh, we do have a parents evening coming up on the 18th and 20th of October. They're going to be online. Um, it means that you don't then have to come into school and find somebody else to look after your children at the same time. Um, you do it in the comfort of your own front room, as long as you're not too worried about house embarrassment. Um, and then they're normally about 10 minutes each and closer to the time you'll get a letter coming out where you'll be able to book a time online that suits you. OK, communication. We check our emails normally at break time and at lunchtime. Um, if you need to change anything to your child's day, like who's picking them up or what time they're being picked up or what's happening, if you could get the email in as early as possible, because then we will definitely see it by lunchtime. Um, we must have parental permission, either written or verbal, before we allow your child to leave school with a different adult. Uh, even if they're going over for a play date or um, nanny's picking them up or there's been a change of circumstance, um, we need an email in or a phone call in, please. Um, so please don't be offended if the message hasn't got to us for whatever reason and we need to go and double check in the office. OK, or ask the office staff to call you. Um, our priority is keeping the children safe. So we'd rather than be safe and then get them to the right adult rather than release them and think, oh, where are they? Um, so any messages for staff, email to the school office. Um, this is immediately forwarded to the relevant person each morning. It means that if we're not in school for any reason, if we're on a course or if we're just not in that day, your important message will still be seen by a member of staff and acted upon. It won't just sit in a, um, a folder for half a day um, and be missed. So please, please email to the office. Okay. Information, things like trips and lunches and uniform, anything like that can be checked with the office. It's worth checking on the school website first as well. Please let our lovely ladies in the office know about medication, any forms to be completed, um, or if there's any change in it. And again, please inform the school office about pickups, anything else to do with policies or diary dates um, are on the school website and newsletters are sent out um, weekly by Mr Usher. So any questions that um, you want to ask us, um, if they are particular to your child or you need a longer um, answer to it, instead of asking us in front of everybody else tonight, please email them in. Um, as soon as possible so we can get back to you. We do ask that you give us some time to um, talk to whoever we need to talk to in school um, and then reply back to you either to come in for a meeting or have a virtual meeting. Um, it might not be a immediate sort of that day reply. And again, for a longer meeting, please arrange an appointment being in the office after school. That would be wonderful. Now, over this is now me finished and I've spoken for far too long um, so I'm going to stop this particular presentation and hopefully Mrs Smith can open up for any questions. Let's see. Okay. Let's see. Now do we have, is there anybody that would has a question about what? Ah, we've got what grade books will the children be reading? Well, with the AR reading scheme, it will be individual. It depends upon the assessment they've taken already online on Friday. Um, it's an amazing scheme that pinpoints where they are in their understanding of reading um, and will produce a, a number. They choose a book for within that number, um, which increases. There's a wide range of books within that section. Um, if we find they are too easy or too complicated, we can always reassess and find a book 
or a level that would suit them. Is that okay? Are there any other questions? You're very welcome. Are there any other questions that we can answer this evening? Reading per week, we asked for about 10 minutes a night, roughly. I know what it's like being a parent, trying to fit in um, extra reading every night can be complicated. So even sort of in the back of the car while you're driving home, <laughs> while you're making the tea, wherever you can squeeze it in, it doesn't have to be you're sat by the bedside for half an hour each night. Um, if you'd like to continue doing that, brilliant. And if you've got the time to do it, lovely. Um, but yeah, at least 10 minutes a night of reading, please. I think there's been a question about lunches and I think another parent has answered the question. I'm glad of that because I would say ask the office about how you pay for Scopay, as I don't know. <laughs> Are there any other questions that we can help you with? Ah, OK, thank you for that. Because I know previously with Scope with Scopay, they have been able to pre-order. So that must be a new thing. So each day, can you make sure if your child is having a main meal, they know what they're choosing and they're not going to end up with something random they don't eat. Mrs. Hathaway? Yes. Mrs. Bendel um, has sent her apologies. For some reason, she can't get her camera or her microphone to work. She is on the meeting. She said if anybody's got any questions, she's more than happy. She has been answering questions as we've gone along, but she's Lovely. more than happy to answer questions through through the chat. Um, but she apologises that she just can't can't get herself on visually. <laughs> it's OK because I couldn't get myself on visually at quarter past four this afternoon. And um, Mr. Uh, uh, Mr Usher actually phoned me and rescued me, which I'm ever so glad about. <laughs> I'm looking forward to the day where we don't have to do this over computers and we can have parents just come into the hall or come into our classrooms like we did before and just ask us directly. It's much, much nicer to see you in person rather than just sort of seeing a blank screen, really. Are there any other questions that we can help you with tonight? Uh, houses, we will be able to tell them tomorrow because the office emailed them through today to us. So we'll let them know what house they're in. They will normally be in the same houses as their siblings. No, not anymore, I don't believe. <laughs> I don't think they are in the same house as their siblings anymore. Ah. I think it's based on numbers. Ah, well, that came through on the email today, so I'll double check they it, but it did say they're Sorry, based on siblings, so. <laughs> so I, I will double check that with um, Mrs Perkins, who's our um, administrator, and she sorts out all the houses. Um, parents evening is a video call like this. We set it up through Teams. So we can see each other and if it doesn't work, then a phone call or depending upon what the COVID instructions are back when we get to October, who knows what it might be, but a lot of parents last year really liked the idea of being able to just click onto their computer, have a 10 minute private conversation with a class teacher without being in the hall with everybody else listening. And it also means you don't then have to worry about who's looking after your children for 10 minutes. So it works really well. Now, there were a couple of questions that I think popped up earlier that I think I missed. Have they been answered? I don't want to leave any questions unanswered. Has every parent that I've asked a question got an answer? Ah, as Mrs. Bendel has said, within the Power Maths, we use um, a textbook, we use a workbook, but we also use practical resources. We mix and match with extra challenges as well. Um, the Power Math Scheme follows the White Rose Math Scheme, um, but uh, uh, Mrs. Bendel is um, a maths mastery teacher, um, and I'm a uh, I've previously trained as a numbers count teacher. So we've got the two ends of the spectrum very carefully mapped out and supported. Help with maths at home, um, again, telling the time, money, um, helping them with times tables, 
Um, recognising maths wherever they can rather than just in a calculation would be good. Mrs Bendel, is there anything you can put up as a as an answer to how else we can help them with maths? Or do you think I might have covered it? Count everything. Oh, yep. Count everything. I agree. Forwards and backwards, please. Yeah, forwards and backwards, not just one way. And also when you if you're counting, don't start at zero, start at a minus number. Go over the hundreds. Don't ever stop at 100. Go further. <laughs> yeah, I think count everything, Mrs. Bendel. Now, just before we finish, is there any other question that we can answer for parents that need to be answered tonight? Before I finish this meeting. Give a minute or two for any quick chats coming through. No, I think unless you have a burning question. Um, oh, you're very welcome. <laughs> Don't worry, Mrs. Stone. I think we've got an issue with our school IT. Do not worry about that whatsoever. Um, and I'm sure that parents will see both Mrs. Bendel and yourself out on the playground when they pick the children up at the end of the day. Um, so. So any other questions that you want to email either to Mrs. Bendel or myself, any queries, please send an email to the office um, and they will direct them to the right person and we will do our best to get back to you as quick as we can. Um, once we finish teaching the children, of course. <laughs> right. Um, I think I've done enough talking for tonight, so uh, I shall say have a wonderful evening and we will see you during the year. Please look out for the letter that will be coming out regarding the trip to Butter Farm. It needs a quite a fast turnaround because we aim to be going there on the 1st of October. Um, absolutely wonderful place. Please Google it, see what it looks online. Um, so please look out for that. Go through your children's bags um, and rescue those if you wouldn't mind. So thank you very much for joining us this evening, everybody. Um, and we will see you out on the playground and uh, during the year. I agree. I've, they are they are amazing. They have learnt to become independent so quickly. This morning we noticed that something that took us an hour on Thursday morning to get them settled took them 10 minutes this morning and they were already learning, which is brilliant. So they are a credit to you already. So thank you very much. So have a lovely evening. We're going to um, end the meeting now. Mrs Smith, you have control? I do. OK, thank you very much, everybody. Have a nice Bye -bye. evening. Bye-bye.